guys, what's up? This is Xbox Hacking 101, and in this tutorial today, I will show you how to mod your wireless Xbox 360 controller. So, first off, let's take a look at what you need. Rosin Core Solder, in this case, Radio Shack 6040 Rosin Core Solder. A momentary push button, this one is a half inch mini that you can see that it's got two prongs you need two prongs 24 to 30 gauge wire this is 30 gauge wire I like I prefer 30 gauge wire to anything bigger than that wire cutters slash strippers and a screwdriver for taking apart your controller now if you don't know how to take apart your controller, I'll post a link in the description to one of my videos teaching you how to take it apart. Alright, so, oh, you also need a soldering iron. This one is a 25 watt soldering iron as well as from Radio Shack. You can get all these items from Radio Shack, including the Xbox 360 controller. Alright, now this mod I'm going to show you guys today, it is it only works on matrix controllers and I'm gonna show you how you can tell if your controller is a matrix controller alright so you can tell if your controller is a matrix controller if there is a huge resistor in the middle that would be that thing right there Another way you can tell is it's got two little thingy-majiggies right there. And hold on. This is what a CG controller looks like. This was a modding experiment, but whatever. That's a CG controller. It has nothing there at all, unlike unlike the matrix controller and the resistor is not on the front it's actually on the back down right there alright so now that you know exactly what controller you can mod let's go ahead and start the modding you are going to take your 30 gauge wire oops, and make it a little bit long because it doesn't matter if you have extra cut it and strip it now this wire stripper only goes up to 26 gauge so what I do is I put the wire into the 26 gauge hole and then I make it flat like that and then I pull just so you guys know in case you want to do that and go ahead and do that with the other side whoops took off way too much this process can be very difficult or very simple if you follow exactly how I say it. alright so take one end of the wire that you just stripped and take your soldering iron and you're gonna wanna connect one of the open ended wires to the middle pin of these three pins just the middle one, not the middle and the top, not the middle and the bottom, just the middle one. And if you guys get solder connected to, like if this one's solder is connected to that one, just um, put your soldering iron over and, and where the connection is made and take a wire and just run it through and it should take most of the solder off. If that doesn't work, you just ruined your controller, and I take no responsibility for anything that you do that might ruin your controller. Alright, so solder that wire to the middle of those three pins. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and give it a nice tug to see if it's in there firmly. And you can see that is the connection. Whoops that that is the connection that's made a nice tug and it won't come out alright so now that you're done with that go ahead and take a little bit more of your 30 gauge wire about that length right there 
you're going to want to cut it and strip it again. All right, so once again, you're going to want to take your soldering iron and this time, whoops, wrong screwdriver. You're going to want to solder a one open end right there. There's two pins. You're going to want to solder the one on the right. Again, if you connect them, just put your soldering iron in between and it'll melt the solder there and then run a wire through it like that and it should take off some of the solder, if not all of it. So once again, you're going to want to solder right there, the right pin. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And if you need to, you can add more solder to the joint. So that's perfectly fine. All right, now that you've got your controller all rigged and set up, you're going to want to go over to your to the bottom of your controller and mark out a little spot where you're going to drill a hole for the mini push button or for the mini momentary push button to go through. Now, I've already done that with this controller. So, what you're going to want to do now is if your momentary push button has a bolt on it, you're going to want to unscrew that and screw it into the hole that you made and then go ahead and put that bolt back on. All right, now that you got your two-pronged uh, momentary push button inside and bolted to your controller, you're going to want to go ahead and put your motherboard back into its place on the controller. And now we're going to take one of our wires and feed it through and then bend it back so it doesn't come undone while we're soldering it. Take your solder and your soldering iron. Go ahead and put your soldering iron first and then attach the rosin core solder. It should make a nice joint there. Alright, you just connected your one of your push button joints. Now we're going to go ahead and do that with the next one. Alright, so once again feed the open wire through the um, prong, one of the prongs. If you want, you can bend it back. I prefer to bend it back because it makes it easier. Don't bend it too much because it might break off. So, Alright, so once you've got your wire like that, you can go ahead and solder it again. Wait for it to dry, and you're good. Alright, now I will show you guys a, um, a little clip of the mod in action. Alright guys, this is the clip that I promised you guys. So here you can see I'm in Halo 3 on Big Team Slayer with a battle rifle. This is normal. And this is the mod. Alright, so as you guys can see, it works pretty well. This has been an Xbox Hacking 101 tutorial. If you guys like my videos, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.